Greetings again everyone, and today you can see me manhandling a lens which I've wanted to test out for a long time, the Tokina 50mm f1.4 Opera. It's for full frame digital SLR cameras in Canon and Nikon mounts. The Canon version costs about 800 US dollars or just under 800 pounds in the UK, the Nikon version a little more. I'd like to thank Tokina for lending me a sample of this lens for testing for a few weeks, although as usual this is a totally independent review. Tokina are generally well known for their ultra wide angle zoom lenses and macro lenses, so it's really nice to see them stepping out of their comfort zone and putting a high quality bright aperture prime lens out there for everyone. And a fast 50mm lens is a great place to start, they're so popular. On a full frame camera, that's a great angle of view for everyday photography, giving you a nice little emphasis on your subject, and potentially pretty out of focus backgrounds too. An aperture as wide as f1.4 will do that for you, as well as letting you get nice, fast shutter speeds in darker situations. So let's take a look at its build quality first. The lens is quite big and heavy, weighing in at just under a kilogram. The lens's complicated optical formula, incorporating no less than 15 glass elements, is chief suspect for that. It's all based on a metal lens mount, with a generous weather sealing gasket around the edge. In fact, Tokina mentioned that the lens is generally well sealed for dust and moisture. It has a simple switch for auto or manual focus, which I much prefer to Tokina's more common push-pull clutch mechanism, and the large rubberized focus ring turns really smoothly and evenly, and it can be turned at any time. As you focus in and out, we see a little focus breathing, with the lens zooming in as you focus more closely. The focus motor works accurately and reasonably quickly, as you can see here. It emits a quiet whooshing sound as it goes, so if you're shooting video that will pick up on your camera's microphone. The lens comes with a generously deep hood, with a neat feature, a small bottom chunk of it can be removed entirely to help you adjust any filters you might have on the lens, that's a handy feature. It has a 72mm filter thread size, and it does not have image stabilisation. Overall, pretty high marks for build quality here, it's pretty much as good as you can get, although its large size and weight is something to be taken into consideration. Well, let's move on now and look at image quality. We'll start on a full frame camera, I've adapted the lens onto my Sony a7R2 with its demanding 42 megapixel sensor. In the middle of the image, straight away at f1.4 we see excellent sharpness and contrast, with only a tiny hint of purple fringing on strongly contrasting edges. Corner image quality is noticeably soft. I've seen worse than this on a 50mm lens though. Stop down to f2 for more brightness and contrast in the corners, and any purple fringing we saw in the middle is now gone. Stop down to f2.8 and the corners get a lot sharper, and at f4 they're very sharp. Stop down to f5.6 or f8 for further, tiny improvements, and the lens stays this sharp now, pretty much down to f16. So on full frame, we see excellent sharpness and contrast in the middle of your images, but the corners are a bit soft until you stop down a bit. Well, I am going to really challenge this lens now by checking out its performance on what is probably my most demanding camera. I've adapted it onto a Canon EOS M6 Mark II with its rather brutal 32.5 megapixel APS-C sensor. Straight from f1.4, the good news is that resolution remains impressively high in the middle of the image, contrast looks just a tiny bit lower to me here, and that purple fringing is a tiny bit more noticeable, but it's still a surprisingly clean picture. I don't test many lenses on this camera, so if you want a quick comparison, here's Canon's own 50mm f1.4 USM lens side by side, quite a difference as you can see. When we look over into the corners, the Tokina lens gets softer, but still, it's comparatively good. Well anyway, stop down to f2 for a small improvement in contrast in the corners and back in the middle too, where image quality is now excellent. Stop down to f2.8, and the picture quality becomes absolutely perfect in the middle, and the corners are looking a lot better now. We see further small improvements at f4 and f5.6. On such a high resolution camera as this, the softening effects of diffraction set in earlier than normal, so if you stop all the way down to f11, then the image will begin to get a little softer again. 
Well, as you consider these APS-C test results, you really need to remember that I tried it out on what is by far the toughest APS-C camera sensor on the market today, so in that respect, it put in a very good performance. On a 24 megapixel APS-C camera, it'll look great, I think. Ok, let's move on and look at distortion and vignetting on a full frame camera. It's good news here, the lens projects no visible distortion. At f1.4 the corners are a bit dark as you'd expect, but that vignetting is actually far milder than you would normally see on such a lens, and stop down to f2 to see it almost gone. A very good performance here. Now let's see about close up image quality. The lens can focus down to 40cm, a bit closer than average for a 50mm prime. At f1.4, that close up image quality remains impressively sharp, although purple fringing is a bit more pronounced. Stop down to f2 to see that purple fringing eliminated, so it's another good performance here. How well does this lens work against bright lights? They often cause huge problems for 50mm optics, but again, the Tokina lens does a better than average job here, with only moderate flaring and glaring issues. Now on to bokeh. A fast 50mm lens can give you very out of focus backgrounds, and it's vital for manufacturers to get them looking as smooth as possible. Thankfully, again, the Tokina lens does pretty well here, they mostly look very lovely and smooth. A particularly busy background, like foliage, might be able to tease a bit of busyness in your bokeh, but overall, another positive result here really. And related to bokeh is longitudinal chromatic aberration, that is colour fringing on bokeh highlights that surround the plane of focus. At f1.4, we see some green and purple muscling their way in here. Stop down to f2 and it's greatly reduced though, and at f2.8 it's cleared up. So then, overall, I quite enjoyed testing out the Togina 50mm f1.4 Opera, and not just because it's interesting for me to see a lens manufacturer doing something a little outside their normal comfort zone. It's not quite the sharpest 50mm lens I've ever tested when it comes to corner image quality, and I'll admit I was mildly disappointed about that but its overall performance is still very good indeed, it's certainly a lot better than older 50mm designs, and it's quite a cut above the competition when used on an APS-C camera too. Its vignetting and distortion levels are comparatively low, it works well against bright lights, it offers nice colours and plenty of contrast, its close up image quality and bokeh are pretty impressive, its build quality and autofocus performance very good, but a bit heavy going, literally. All in all, it just offers a lovely, solid performance, broadly in range with its price tag, and it's certainly the best Tokina lens I've ever tested, and so if this is the price range you're looking at for your 50mm lens, it comes recommended.